Have you ever walked down the street and found yourself magnetically connected to somebody and you're both turning around looking at each other like there's some kind of special connection but you can't figure out why maybe you're from different states you're from different countries but there's that connection love never comes when you're looking for it it only hits you like a semi truck in the dark when you least expect it Hi, I'm Anne Marie, and you are listening to Achieve Spiritual Holistic Radio. Today's reading is on telepathic love and soulmates. There's a lot of talk about is so and so my soulmate? When will I find my soulmate? Are they my soulmate? I'm not getting along with them, but are they my soulmate? These are the questions I get often. And every question is important to that person. But I have to repeat the one thing that I believe without a doubt. And that's that soulmates are connected to us from a past life. So that when you may have had a beautiful relationship with somebody in the past, and in this life, maybe that soulmate will be somebody that you reconnect with again. I believe that could be a soulmate from another life. And some of those soulmates aren't meant to be reconnected with again. Some of those, so some of those soulmates are people that maybe we did not have a beautiful relationship with. Maybe it was abusive. Maybe it was always leading to frustration. Maybe it was one of those things that had its time and had its chapter. And now in this new life, you are meant to move on and find somebody else. But maybe so, maybe not. But the main thing is all soulmates are not good for us. So oftentimes I see psychic sites or psychic readers promoting, let me help you find your soulmate. Well, in my opinion, if a soulmate is meant to come into your life. It will happen without a road sign. It'll happen without a description. Because if your guides and angels want you to reconnect with somebody that's meant to be in your life, there's no stopping it. You will find each other. And who's to say that the person that somebody sees from another lifetime or even in this lifetime, is meant for you to be with. Maybe that person is somebody that you're supposed to move on from, heal from, and move on with a new chapter in your life. Because every life has its soulmates. It is my belief that a soulmate may be somebody that's in a child form or even a pet. I don't believe that we are necessarily restricted to having just people that are lovers to be soulmates. I believe they can be that dog, that cat, that horse. They can be also that lovely child that feels so resonatingly familiar. And yes, it probably is past life connection with somebody precious. I truly believe that the more that you search for love and the more that you want to have a roadmap and a sign and a, an appearance, you're actually selling yourself short to fall, sh to settle for less with somebody that may not necessarily be the soulmate that you are meant to be with. So I just wanted to add that. Now, telepathic love. 
what is telepathic love? If you have never had a connection with somebody so intense, whether you know them just a little bit, or whether you've dated them, or maybe you've been old lovers, maybe it's two people that were in a relationship and that had no chance of being together in this relate in this life or at this time, um, a telepathic connection, I often call chicken shit love. And why do I call it that? Because the more that you allow someone to telepathically channel you, get in your head, rent-free space, the more that you actually prevent them from having to step up to the plate and have a real, authentic, flesh and blood relationship. Now, how does it feel? Well, it feels a little like you're carrying somebody's energy around you. It feels as if you can see them, feel them. Um, everything about them is just this sense that their energy is wrapping around you and it can be in your dreams, it can be in your uh, fantasies, it can be in your day at work, and sometimes it can drive you crazy, especially if it is somebody that you broke up with or that you never seem to have a successful relationship with. Well, now, we have to be careful. Sometimes what we perceive as telepathic love is actually in our own desires. And we want it that bad that we can't quit thinking about them. That is not necessarily telepathic love. But there are telepathic relationships where someone just tunes in, channels in, and you can feel each other. You can just, and you'll notice that even end up in the same store or the same road or the same internet site at the same time as if you just keep connecting. And that is because you're so finely tuned into each other that that's called telepathic love. Lori, say your first name. Lori. And then again. Lori. And then one more time. Lori. Thank you, babe. So Lori, here's what comes up for your shop reading of the day, because I know you have to get back. What is the name of your shop again? Snooks Carpet and Furniture. Awesome. And that's where? Sioux Rapids. So the first Iowa. thing All right, that there comes you go. There's up a little promo for says, you. have not learned your lesson about something, and I'm not sure what that is. But you are going to have a, an amazing next 12 months, it says. This is going to be a year of empowerment for you. This is the card of you are the chariot and you are driving the chariot. Good and evil is on each side. So there'll be a lot of both, but you'll still come out ahead. It also has the card of romance, which can indicate a couple of things. Romance does not always mean love and desire. It can also mean the ability to have a beautiful environment, which is what your shop is all about. It's also about creating, um, I always call it the Camelot card. It's like creating a Lori feeling wherever you go, a touch of pretty, a touch of, of organic. But I also know that you're a very organic, not organics in the way you eat, but that you're a hands-on, not afraid to get dirty lady. So I know that, um, right? Am I right on that? 
Yeah. Okay. Yep. Your reading shows that in the past, you've been open to whatever the universe gives you. You've been open to trying not to count your chickens before they're hatched. So you're a true survivor. You're not caught into it's got to be this way or I'm not going to be happy. It's also about you being open-minded. Your reading shows that you're um, surrounded by angels. You're surrounded by strong, higher self and inner and this means that your inner voice of high of your higher self, your angels, is directing you all the time. Sometimes it seems like kids can drive you crazy, but it also says that sometimes it's about the fluctuation of making money, not making so much money, making money, not making so much money that can drive you crazy. Too, which is just with the times and I think that things are going to get back on track. It's like right now after the pandemic, which it sounds like we're all going back into pandemic, but after the first wave of pandemic, um, it seems like um, things, things became really um, sketchy for a lot of people because I a lot of readings from shopkeepers that stayed open through it all and they had so much business and then when the um, things got better and the vaccines came out and everything opened up all of a sudden a lot of shops that that were the only shops open had more competition so your reading is saying is that <clears throat> you may find yourself in the up and down swing of making money and and slowing down, but you're not going to let yourself get down. You're not going to see the worst case scenario. Again, it says you're just waiting to see this year how things go. And what it says you really want is just to make a lot of money and to be able to know that you're a pillar of the community and that you're somebody that people can count on as a professional and be accomplished and lastly it says you are the warrior woman the xena so what this is saying is that even if the ups and downs this year in your business drive you crazy sometimes understand that you will be well respected in your community you will be doing much better this year regardless of what your choice is to do about your business and it says that um for the most part it's a great year for you Lori. good do you have any questions like no, one question i think so okay so if i give you a quick angel reading will you mind i'd like that all right <laughs> Okay, an angel reading talks about your blessings and your gifts. The first blessing that you are seen as, um, you're kind of a witchy angel because you have the power to manifest things into your life when you really concentrate on them. In other words, if you feel that you truly want something, as long as, as it's within the boundaries of common sense, you're able to get it. It's kind of a manifesting ability. You're a hard worker and it says you're loyal to your hard work and to your customers. So your reading says that's a blessing. It says you're traditional, but then you're, again, you're a little bit of centric. You're both. You're a traditional eccentric, which means that you're not afraid to try new and different things. That's a gift. 
<laughs> this one may not be a gift for some people, but it it, it is in a way, because if you run a business, you have to be able to know when to lay the law, when to tell people how it how you stand. So you're the voice of authenticity. You're authentic. You know when to say the hard things and you know when to let things slide. And because you're that way, people know where they stand. And that's a real blessing. And lastly, it says, even though you feel sometimes like you're in a prison <laughs> of, of so many things that you have to do, you are loyal and you stay with it. So you're the person everybody wants on their side. When you believe in something, you believe in it with all your heart. And when you believe in someone, you're very loyal. And those are all very beautiful qualities. Okay? Thank you. All right. You have a great uh, day and make lots of money. Okay. So, Jen, if you will, yes. say your first name. Jennifer. Thank you. And then say it again. Jennifer. Thank you. And then say it one more time. Jennifer. Thank you. So, this is what comes up around your energy today. Um, the first thing it says is that you've been going through some kind of, um, kind of some downtime in the past two months where it felt as if either you were running your head off and you didn't have enough you time, or there was a sense that there was just a lot of juggling going on. Something was going on because it felt like your energy was being stretched in a thousand directions at once. It shows that that was not a happy time for you. But now it shows you as the star. So whatever you did to be able to give your utmost in the past is going to give you the good karma to improve your life for the rest of the year. You, you, whatever you invested in action-wise paid off. Your reading shows also, and I don't know who this is, are you married? No. Do you have a boss who's been kind of a pain in the butt? Here, the reason, um, no. the, reason, the reason I ask is because this means somebody, a, a guy, and he's upside down, which means insecure or seems to be a little lost soul at this time. So unless you have a boyfriend or maybe a brother that's been going through some rough times, it may indicate that this person is somebody who kind of depends on you and holds on to you for security. And the thing is that um, whatever it is, it's just a part of your life and that you will notice that things improve for you no matter who's around you that's a major player. You're still all about Jen. All about Jen is what this reading is. <laughs> So if I look yeah. at what if I look at what comes up in more detail and say your first name again. Jennifer. Okay. And then again. Jennifer. Thank you. And then one more time. Jennifer. Thank you. So Jennifer, the first thing that comes up is things aren't changing as fast as you would like them to right now. It shows that don't worry because the next 12 years is going to sock you in the face with so many changes. 
<laughs> You've learned a huge lesson this year. This is the hangman, and it just said that's indicating um, learn from past mistakes, uh, have come to a huge realization in your life. The past shows that you're somebody who likes to be a little in charge of your life and a little in charge of what's going on around you. But that causes you to have to split up and go a thousand directions at one time to be able to do that. And your reading says that in the future, you're going to feel like Sometimes, the more that you try to please a lot of people, the more alone you feel, if that makes any sense. Okay. Your reading says the last thing you want is to forget about somebody that screwed you over. Mm. Your reading also says the problem is that person doesn't seem to be trying very hard to change the dynamics. What you want is a happy home, a happy career, and it doesn't bother you to multitask. I think that you're kind of built for that kind of thing. Lastly, it says, one of the things that comes through is the changes that are coming means that you need to allow other people to sometimes be in charge. Mm -hmm. This may be in a relationship where you feel like you're with somebody that has been really insecure, but they've latched on and they, they, they count on you for so much. And it says, not your monkey, not your circus. You've got to <laughs> allow them to be able to fix themselves because they will learn from that and benefit. Whereas if you do the mama all the time, mm -hmm. then the mama is what you're going to be. And if maybe that's okay. Maybe you want to be Mama Jen. But if a Mama Jen doesn't want to be a Mama Jen anymore, then perhaps it's time for you to let somebody else be in charge of their mistakes in their life because they'll learn from it just like you've learned from yours. Right. Okay. I'm going to give you a short angel reading and then we're done. Okay. Okay. These are your gifts and your blessings. Say your first name again. Jennifer. And then again. Jennifer. And then one more time. Jennifer. Thank you. I, you look like a little queen in that pillow with the medieval oh, yeah. kind of thing. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> so the biggest thing that comes through as one of your, not the biggest, but it says you have a way of not, how do you want to say that? There's some people that can quietly control by not making it seem like they're telling people what to do. But at the same time, it shows you're very much a power person. You need to have things a certain way to be happy. But you're also very good at not putting your foot in your mouth too many times so that people hate you. You don't want people to hate you. You're, a, you're very loyal. You're somebody that's a very strong team player, whether it's a relationship or whether it is a career dynamic or your family. You are a good team player. Your reading also says, and I don't know why this would be, but are you, are you, do you have children? No. I have a dog. Okay. <laughs> okay. Then so when I show this is not the year for you to be married, you're not going to be upset? No. Not at okay. all. Okay. <laughs> because it says actually that's a blessing for you. 
because you've got enough on your plate and right now having a husband might make it even more. I was afraid to tell you that because some people go, oh, oh my gosh, no, no, I have to be married. Um, I, I don't know why, Jen, but I'm showing you sad. I'm showing you upset about something you lost in the last 12 months. And your reading says that sometimes it could either be the loss of a loved one or it could be the loss of a lifestyle. It, I'm not sure what it is, but it says you haven't completely healed from it. And because you haven't completely healed from it, you're not ready to turn around and see something better. Um, but that's okay. okay. You're giving yourself time to heal and not pressuring yourself to do something stupid by going and settling for less. Mm, okay. And lastly, it says you're very honest. Um, this would be secrets, but it's in reverse, which means that you're not one to hold a lot of secrets and gossip about people. You're more honest. And if you feel a certain way, you're going to let them know. But the most important thing is that you are who you are. People like you for being authentic. And like it or not, it's all about Jen. They're going to get Jen, authentic Jen. Okay? Yes. Today, we're going to look at also readings for other people that have called in through Zoom, as well as I will look at Achieve Radio at some of the people that have requested readings on my show. You will all get covered. And before each time that there's a reading, I will have a blue screen that says the name of the person when it's a Zoom reading. If it's a, a Achieve reading, then I will say your name because you've probably come back for readings many times. So you won't mind that, I'm sure. So today, again, I wanted to look at how do you end the broken record of someone intruding into your mind with telepathic love and renting free space in your head because you can see them, you can feel their energy, and it's as if like a tortoise shell on your back and you can just carry that energy wherever you go a lot of times they do not know that they are even doing it they may be consciously thinking of you but they are not realizing that their intrusiveness their powerful intrusiveness is creating a telepathic portal which the more you allow that person to rent free space in your head the more that it becomes easier and easier to do until at nighttime when you're sleeping, just as I say, spirit communication is most available when your boundaries are down when you're sleeping. So is that the same case with telepathic love? And again, I do not pretend that all telepathic love is that. There may be times where you truly want somebody so bad in your life that you just constantly think about them. That is called obsession. That is not telepathic love. Telepathic love is you'll be just sitting there, not even thinking about anything in specific, watching a television show or talking to a friend. <laughs> all of a sudden around you is the powerful energy of somebody that you can feel and and almost as if you're just hearing them speak to you out of the blue so and we're not talking about schizophrenia guys we're talking about true telepathic love okay so I wanted to um, remember before each zoom reading there will be a blue screen of hands holding a dove and the name of the person getting the reading.
I do want to be able to first read on some of the people that have come into the Achieve Room. Um, and I will read for you. So when we look at the first person that asked for a reading, we are going back to uh, the first one that comes up is Susanna. Nope, that was for someone else. This one is for Jan from LA. She says, hi, Anne Marie. May I please have a reading on anything that is coming up for me in the next few months? Jan, when I look at that, um, and I look at a three card reading for you. The first thing that comes up, Jan, for July, August, September. July is seen as the month of new hope. There seems to be a sense that something in your life is giving you hope that your um, seeing the return of a relative, you're doing something travel wise, you're doing something that is new and different. In August, it seems like a very stagnant month. It seems as if that is the month of shutdown for you, where it does not seem as if you are necessarily um, doing anything special. So if I look at um, that's September. September, nice, peaceful, beautiful Indian summer. It would seem to me that that is the month that you are going to be able to make plans to see people, maybe go visit a relative, um, or maybe just get things done around the house. That is a great month for that. And if I look at one month more, now this is interesting. Uh, October is the month of you leaving an imprisoning situation. So because you are leaving an imprisoning situation, I'm not sure if that's retirement. I'm not sure if that is something um, that you are uh, getting out of a plan that you really didn't want to do, um, something that wasn't very pleasant for you and that you were was kind of a burden. Um, I would say October is a good month for you to leave stagnant things that no longer resonate. And that's what I had, Jan. All right, when I look at the next one, I have Patrick, and it says, hello, can I please have a three-month financial reading? All right, Patrick, looking at three-month financial reading. And when I look at that, Patrick, I have, we're going to start with September, or excuse me, August, September, and October. So, August seems like a month where you need to learn from your mistakes of the past. Don't be spending money unwisely. Um, if you're going to spend money in August, make sure that you have a predictable outcome. Don't be throwing your money out on anything that's not investigated, researched. Make sure that if you have a vacation that month or you're doing something job-wise, you're spending money on something that you totally have knowledge about. In September, I don't know why, but it shows a money loss or a sense of stillness for your money income. But that changes in um, October when all of a sudden money uh, fluctuates, picks up again, and that continues in November, which also looks financially good for you. And that's what I have on that, Patrick. If I look at um, Lena, Lena says, can I please have a general reading? All right, Lena, sure can. And I hope that you guys will tune into the video and hear or see these readings for you because I am seeing you in the room and um, preparation. So I just want to tell you, I'm thinking about you. Okay, I'm going to pick up the magic desk, <laughs> tarot reading desk. And 
first thing I have, Lena, says there seems to be somebody that is controlling your life right now. I don't know who this person is, but you seem to be giving them the ability to tell you what to do. I'm also shown that it's time for you to take a break because if you've had powerful influences around you, you truly need to take a small vacation or do something new and novel in the coming, um, I'm gonna say month or two. Because right now it says, Lena, you feel invisible. You feel like nobody's paying attention to you and you don't necessarily feel like you matter and you do matter. So I want you just to pay attention to taking a break. The past Lena shows you um, actually doing quite well during COVID. I would say that for whatever reason, maybe you're a loner at heart or maybe your life was predictable even during COVID, but it shows that you will be able to do just fine and, or you did just fine in the last months of last year. But now it's time for you to make some new plans. I want you to pay attention to fixing something that's really been making you unhappy dragging you down, making you feel silly. And I compare this to something I just did, which was silly as it may be, I was paranoid about putting my charge, my debit card into a gas pump to pump gas. I'd always go inside and pay prepay. So I said, by gosh, I am so tired of feeling weak. I'm going to do something about this. And I did. So I had somebody show me how to use my debit card in the gas machine or the gas pump so I could not have to go in the store. I feel so much better. Something so simple and easy like that, that weighs you down and makes you feel weak, fix it. That's what I see. Ultimately, Lena, it says that you feel a little bored these days. You know that you feel as if there's things all around you that are controlling you. And all you want is to be honest and tell everybody to take a freaking hike that you want to be free from them. And I would say, go ahead and do that with tactfulness. This is a time for you to have boundaries. Start saying no instead of yes to the people demanding things from you. That's what I see, Lena. Uh, all right. We have one more, and that's Joseph. And Joseph is from Arizona. And he says, can I get an organic reading? You sure can, Joseph. So one moment as I look at that for you. And then I'm going to go back into the topic of how to kick somebody out of your head that you want to move on from. So let's first look at Joseph. Can I get an organic reading? All right, Joseph. And if I look at that, and what comes through? Joseph, it says right now, I'm getting a wonderful card. It shows the lovers. And the lovers would in Kate, that you are either surrounded by people that you truly love or about to be, or maybe you're in a relationship that is just really getting along right now. Your reading says, it seems like in the next seven months, you're investing a whole lot of time and energy and effort into something that you feel totally passionate about. But this hasn't happened yet. Your reading says the problem is you have to be careful about being too needy. You need to be careful that when you have something in your life that is a new opportunity for love, romance, possibly a new friend, don't be a needy puppy. Take your time. Don't allow yourself to become um, pesky, okay, needy, pesky. 
Joseph, your reading says you're such a caring guy, such a loving guy, and you would do anything for anybody that you truly care about. Your reading says, though, Joseph, that the most important thing you can do is remember when you let your guard down, when someone new, a friend, a new love, or whatever that is in your life, play it cool. Don't become the needy puppy. Don't become too desperate because you may actually chase away what it is that is the blessing coming into your life. Sometimes we just need to back off a little bit and be cautious and show respect and distance in a respectful way for new friends or relationships so that we don't scare them away. If you do this, you allow them to invest in you. It's not just all you doing that in them. Let others invest in you before you go into needy puppy mode. That's what I'm telling you, Joseph, and that's what I see. All right. So I'm going to go into the subject of what to do when that telepathic love connection is in your life. So if you believe in auras, energy, action, and portals, welcome to the concept of unwelcome telepathic love. The theory is that certain people spirits or energy connect to a vibration that's in sync with our own, just like two notes playing in harmony sync together, that give them the ability to join our thoughts and dreams. We may never find ourselves constantly channeling this frustration because we can not let go of them. Maybe Maybe they cross our boundaries and in energy, join us like a broken record that we can't let go of, but we just, we just can't seem to stop saying no. Remember, our brains are like spoiled little children in the grocery cart. They will grab on to thoughts that, that go over and over and over again, just like children will cry over and over for candy. And it is your job to set the boundaries with that child with those children, as well as to your brain, so that it does not keep replaying the broken record candy of someone's energy. Telepathic lovers are not responsible they are totally a free will and without ethical rules and usually no consideration of your boundaries. And you have to do that by blocking them. And how does that happen? Well, it's as if they can step into our dreams. Some old lovers may find a way to travel through their dreams into ours. And it's as if they can sense when you are finally forgetting them because the that feeling of void comes in. They're not feeling your energy. And when that energy changes, it's very strong. It feels like space and time are coming between you and that person and it scares them. So what do they do? Suddenly, you may get a phone call from them. Suddenly, you may see them at your door wanting a visit. Now, how come they couldn't do that before? Well, my dear, you trained them that you will allow telepathic love for them to have free space in your head because they never missed you as long as you gave them that space. But as soon as you cut them off, as soon as the void is there, they're either going to be there on your phone or at your door, 
wondering what on earth is going on, or you'll never hear from them again. It's called blocking. And blocking is an important tool. It's the ability to shut out unwanted thoughts, presence, and energy. So how do you do that when you're sleeping? If you're not conscious of being able to close a portal, well, here's what you do. Okay, now these are steps that you need to do to close that portal so someone cannot intrude in your dreams. As you lay down to sleep, imagine a door. Visualize yourself shutting that door. Lock it. Padlock it. And chain it. Say to yourself, no one can enter my dreams unless I invite them. Now go to sleep. And when you are going off to sleep, envision that door locked shut with a prayer or some kind of blessing. You are, in effect, changing a frequency channel like a radio to a different song. But it's called blocking. Sharing your thoughts and changing them a different direction. Just like changing that channel on the radio to a different song. If you find your thoughts straying back firmly, say no, no, no. Now the first week you may wake up very, very tired. This is to be expected in mind discipline. Because as your child, you know, begs for candy, you just need to remember that that is what your brain is doing. So envisioning that portal door locked is as important in the day you have to keep that portal door locked otherwise boom there you are thinking about them again non-stop going please why can't i just lock them well it's up to you you can envision the portal door locked in the day daydreams carry the ability to let in obsessive thoughts. Don't we know that? So imagine the portal to your daydreams locked and protected by angels. Lock the portal door. Chain the door. Padlock the door. You are completely protected, surrounded by white light. You are protected against disruptive, obsessive thoughts. And you have to practice all the time. It's discipline. With constant practice, blocking will get easier and easier. And you will heal as you learn to block obsessive old loves as well as office dispute energy can be shut out nothing can enter your thoughts or invade your energy or cause you harm because you are learning how to access mental empowerment welcome to the ability to block, to be free, and to reach the sky again. With practice, using the image of the locked portal door 
will give you the peace of mind you are searching for. And believe me, when you shut that door and you lock it, and that other person feels that the distance has grown into a huge cavernous void, you are either going to hear from them on your phone or you're going to see them at your door because that's what happens when you block telepathic love. What's another word for telepathic love? Chicken shit love. Why chicken shit love? Because sometimes it's with two people that already have partners, but they somehow mess around telepathically. Or it can be just from an old love that can't let go. And they and that feeling is that they are always intruding on your energy. It can be somebody that wishes you harm. Somebody that you have a work dispute with. Block it. Block it. You will find that blocking telepathic love is the most useful tool you can have in your toolbox. So that's what I see, and I'm sticking with it. Now on to the Zoom readings. Thank you. And remember, if you want a personal reading, you will go to thecallingoflight.com. And you can get a personal reading, 15 minutes for $30, $60 for half an hour. And remember, you can find me here at Achieve. Listen to the YouTubes every week. They will be posted. And if I see that you have a name that is new, um, a new name uh, request on Achieve uh, for my show, I will also give you a reading on the YouTube. <laughs> okay, say your first name, honey. Noel. Thank you. And then again. Noel. Noel. No. Come on, everybody. And then, uh, <laughs> and then again. Noel. Thank you. That is a beautiful song. Thanks. Noel. Yeah. Okay. Oh, what a nice reading. So here's where your energy, it says you are extremely generous. Hmm. Okay. Which means that um, generous doesn't mean that you have to give all your money away. It just means that you've got a generous heart, you've got a good heart, and that um, sometimes that can be a problem if someone gives more than they get back in return, right? Right? Yeah, yeah that's a big, big thing that I'm learning. Um, it says also you've always been a person that showed people a lot of gratitude. So I think that whether people give you gratitude or not, you're always very quick to show how much you appreciate people. And I know that's a fact. You're also extremely intelligent. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you say so. I'm not saying so. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> that's what the guides and angels are saying. All right. But, but here comes the bad part. That's not bad part. Okay. This means good fortune. It's upside down. Okay. Uh-huh. Which means that sometimes, even though you're generous, even though you give as much appreciation away, even if you are intelligent, you're still capable of making stupid choices. Yeah. Or, wow. or, or maybe that's not, maybe that's not it. Maybe stupid choices, but feeling like you're not being appreciated or that you aren't realizing how lucky you really are. Okay. And it says you're a visionary at heart, meaning you're very intuitive. I you like have, 
you have a lot of um, insight and gut feeling about the things around you and and you can kind of read people the minute they come into a room you just know well i know how it feels anyway yeah so if i look at what comes up in more detail and say your first name noel thank you and then again Noel. And then one more time. Noel. <laughs> okay. We like to laugh and smile, don't we, Noel? Yeah. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> it says stuck. It says oh. you feel like you're stuck right now. This is the wheel of fortune, meaning that you are full of adventure and fun and that you feel like a uh, Lewis and Clark, but it's upside down, which uh -huh. means that at this particular time, whether it's by choice or whether it's not, you feel kind of like you're stuck. Um, it also says you're a woman of love, care, and sweetness. You are the queen. Hmm. You're also basically a really sunny and happy person, it says. Okay. But your reading also says you have a tendency to like unique people or eccentric. You can be a little eccentric yourself. And Absolutely. that's, and that's okay. That's a beautiful thing. You're not afraid of being unique. And it says you're surrounded by a happy home. And that in the next 10 months, that happy home is all around you. Um, this would indicate creative potential. Okay. It's upside down. <laughs> Which indicates that as long as you choose to be stuck, it's hard to do, to go to school or do new and different things or, or be, or be a cop or be, work for um, a prison, um, which we talked about that right. you, would, you would kind of think would be unique and fun because who would want to do that except a unique and, and interesting <laughs> person. Your reading says, I'll get to it. D don't hurry me. I'll get to it. So this stands for new beginning. And it says, yeah, you'll get around to all, all that. Just, just, just don't pressure me. Your reading also says, hmm, and I don't know why this comes up. Um, moody and temperamental man comes up. Huh. And I <laughs> and, and it I don't know why, but that seems to indicate that you are surrounded by a moody temperamental man. Okay. But despite the fact you're happy, you're in a very good place, you will continue to be in a wonderful place. You have harvest home, happy life, and a happy family all together in your reading. And lastly, it says, even though you've got all these blessings, you're still not quite happy. You still feel like you could do just a little bit more, have a little bit more to be a happy camper. But I think you're doing quite well. So get off your damn pity party, Missy Missy. <laughs> you're doing great. Okay. So. That's the angel reading and say your first name. Noel. Noel. And again. Noel. Noel. And one more time. Noel. Here's your blessings and gifts. You bring harmony and peace to wherever you are. When you lay the law, you lay the law. <laughs> so nobody better 
go out of their boundaries or they're going to hear from you. You're great with kids. Okay. Now, you don't sound like you believe that. Well, I think I'm good with my kids. Well, is it your kids the kids? Yeah, it is to me. You're a hard worker. Okay. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes not. So maybe what that means is that if you have a project at home or you're going to do something that, like take your kid to the swimming pool or do something amazing that's going to take a lot of effort, you're going to give it your all. Yeah. And when you work as a prison guard, you're <laughs> going to give it your all. And lastly, it says, again, you're an intuitive visionary. You know, empaths are people that tend to be oversensitive. Yeah. Sometimes they can be overwhelmed by the energy in their environment. So I would say that if sometimes you find that you don't want to get out of your comfort home thing, it's because of that. So I would be really cautious if you're going to be a security cop or somebody like that. Be careful because that's a lot of crazy energy. Yeah, I, I wasn't thinking about being on the front lines necessarily, maybe like an office setting. Okay, okay, <laughs> I would suggest that because I don't think you would do well with a lot of criminal um, behavior, you know. Not, it would kind of, your empathic self would not blend well with that. But that's what I have today, and thank you so much, Noelle, and I really appreciate you being here today. Thank you. And uh, this tape will self-destruct. Uh, <laughs>